Hello friends, Amy here from Knit Collage. I am so excited to do a little tutorial for you today on Intarsia. So this is our big love sweater. It is coming out in time for Valentine's Day and we are doing the Intarsia technique, which is so much fun. So I'm really excited to teach you this. What's great about Intarsia is that you can create big areas of contrast color and you're not using a typical color work or stranded knitting technique. You're actually just knitting with one color and then the other. So you can kind of see on the back side, I'm only knitting with this contrast color one here. I'm only knitting with contrast color, oh, main color here. So that light purple is the main color and contrast color one. So it's really fun and addictive once you get started doing it. So I can't wait to show you. So for this pattern, you're going to need a main color and a contrast color, which is your heart color and your sleeve color, and then a mini skein kit, which you'll be using for your sleeves in the Knit Collage mini skein kit sampler kit. And then you'll be using it for your back too. We also do um, intarsia on the back. So let's dive into how this all works. Okay. so. Go ahead and wind your yarn if you haven't. The pattern calls for you to wind one of your main color um, skeins into three balls. So about even three balls, you can totally eyeball it. I've gone ahead and done that. And that's important because we will be using these three separate balls to work the intarsia, um, the intarsia color work. So you do need to do that no matter what, you're gonna need separate balls of your main color yarn. And then I've got my contrast color one all ready to go to. So at this point in the pattern, I am on page three of the pattern, which is right here. I've gone ahead with casting on and I've knit the rib and then I have worked three inches of stockinette stitch and I'm ready to work the chart the intarsia chart. So go ahead and do that. Of course, check your gauge. You'll see me knitting on a size 15 needle. That's because I always knit very loosely and I always go down in needle size. So check your gauge like you normally would and then meet me at that next row portion of the pattern. That's where we're going to begin working the chart. So we've got this page, which is page seven of the pattern, and this has your intarsia heart charts. So chart one is going to be for sizes 32 through 48 inch bust. Hard in charge of to say intarsia heart chart two is for sizes 52 through 60 inch, inch bust. I am knitting the second size 36 inch bust. So I will be knitting the first heart chart and this, um, this chart is only for the front. So you've got intarsia heart chart three for the back intarsia pattern. But for right now, you're all set, you're good to go. Choose whichever size you're knitting, the chart you're knitting and follow along with me. So in this chart, the main color is indicated by the white squares. So I have two balls in my main color handy and then my contrast color, which is going to be my heart color right here. And that's indicated in the bright pink color. The way we work charts is always starting on the lower left right hand corner. So you see row one indicated on the vertical column. The rows are indicated vertically here. The stitch is indicated horizontally. So we always work charts starting on the right hand side, lower left corner, sorry, lower right corner. I hope I didn't say that already. Lower right corner and moving right to left. So we're always moving right to left. And we will be working this pattern flat. So intarsia is much easier to work flat because of those multiple balls of yarn. So we're knitting the front panel flat and the back panel flat and then seaming up the side seams. So we'll start down here, move right to left for row one, which is a right side row, a knit row. And then we'll work row two, which is a wrong side purl row from left to right and so on and so on. So you know when you see an odd number row, that's a right side row. And you know when you see 
an even row, that's a wrong side or a purl side row. Okay, so if I go back to the pattern, it says next row, knit eight stitches for my size, work chart one, row one across next 13 stitches, and then knit to end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with my main color yarn. I'm gonna knit eight stitches here. And I am continental, so you'll see me knitting that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna look at that chart. Okay, so on the chart it says I'm still got six more stitches in my main color to knit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now it's time to start my contrast color, which is right here. Okay. And just like you would when you do a stripe, when you do stripe knitting, you're just going to begin knitting with that yarn. We're not gonna do the fancy twist locking technique yet. We're just gonna begin knitting one stitch with that contrast color. Cause you can see stitch seven, one stitch of my contrast color. Now I like to always leave about a five inch tail. So you're gonna go ahead and do that and just let it be loose. The next thing I'm gonna do is not knit from the main color ball of yarn I knit all these stitches from. I'm actually gonna take the second ball of main color yarn and start knitting from there. So that's super important. And in the same way, you will just start leaving a five inch tail and just start knitting. And I can see I've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 all in my main color yarn, and then the pattern says to knit across the entire row. So that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that loose. Uh, it's exactly like when you uh, start a new skein of yarn or you knit stripes, you're just letting it um, be loose and hang out there. Sometimes what I like to do is just do a super loose knot on the back to kind of keep them secure until I have time to weave them in later. Okay, there we go. I'm ready to flip my work. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. We've got um, ends coming out here. <laughs> so I've got this end of my contrast color and this is the one that's attached to the ball of yarn. This is attached to a ball of yarn, and this is my end hanging out right here. The other end is attached to a ball of yarn right where I finished my stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at that chart again, and I see row two. It is a wrong side purl row, so I am going to continue to work the chart, and as I get to, it will be right next to where I did that one contrast color stitch, I'm going to have these also be contrast color on either side. So I can even just look at this chart and know, okay, these two are also going to be in the contrast color as I go up. If you look at the pattern, it says next row, wrong side row, purl eight stitches for my size 36 inch bust, work chart across the next 13 stitches and purl to end. So I can of course follow that as well. So I'm just gonna begin by purling up until that point where it's time to do my contrast color. Okay, here we go. Tell purling is a little more <laughs> good. 
cumbersome for me to do. But I still love it. Okay. So here I am. I've got this stitch right here that I am now ready to purl in my contrast color according to the chart. So the thing we want to keep in mind here is that we need to always be locking in the yarns as we switch colors so that we don't create a hole around the color, colored shape we are making. So the way I like to think about it is take the the yarn you're about to leave behind or the old yarn, which is right here, and you're going to hold it to the left. You're gonna hold it to the left, and then you're gonna draw the color that you're supposed to start knitting in or the newer color up. And you can see that that locks that color in. It kind of traps it and it locks it in. And then I'm going to simply purl that stitch in my contrast color. And you can see it's locked in. I can pull it tight, but you don't wanna pull it too tight um, because you don't want any puckering, but you do wanna lock it in there securely. And then I'll continue to purl two more according to what the chart told me, tells me. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pull on that end a little bit so you can see it a little better. Okay, so I've got the three contrast colors lining up with row two. I'm doing that all purl wise. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did, but with the yarn here, which is coming off my second ball of yarn. This is actually the ball of yarn that I've knit most of the sweater with already. It was my original. And I'm going to hold the yarn I'm ready to be done with, which is my contrast color. I'm calling it the older yarn over to the left. And then I'm going to draw up that main color a new yarn that I'm ready to start knitting with, uh, purling with, excuse me, and I'm simply going to purl with it. And you can see that contrast color is locked in there. It's locked in there. That's gonna make, make sure there's no hole. And then I'm simply purling in that color across the row. That is how you do intarsia. It's so easy. And I'm gonna show you again, so no worries. <laughs> so we're basically going to continue until we have completed the entire chart. And then we go back to the pattern for the instructions after that. One thing I like to do, this is something I think a lot of people do, is I like taking a post-it note and using that to mark where I am in the pattern. So I've just finished row two. So now I'm not confused. I know I'm, I'm on row three now and I'm gonna be knitting. And the pattern is just one more contrast color on either side than I did before to make that heart shape. So I don't even need to count in this pattern. It's so easy to just know by looking at it what comes next. So I can see these two stitches will be contrast colors on row three. And I'm just gonna keep going in that manner. So just get my yarn ready to go. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna knit until my contrast color once again. Okay, so here we are. Now this stitch is going to be pink on this row, row three. So I'm gonna just sort of flip my work over a little bit. And you do have a lot of strands of yarn. I know that is confusing, but here is the one I care about. This is the working contrast color that's coming from the ball. And I'm gonna work in the same way. I'm gonna pull the yarn I am done with over to my left. So this is, I'm calling it my old yarn. I'm pulling it over to the left and I'm going to 
take that contrast color and pull it up and begin knitting with it. And you can see what happens, slide that off, is that, where is that yarn? So you can see it's right here. It's a little hard to tell because it's matching my knitting, but it's right there and it's locked in. It's locked in by that contrast color. And I can give it a little tug, not too tight. And then I'm just gonna continue knitting in my contrast color. One more stitch in my contrast color and I'm ready to switch balls of yarn again. So I've got, this is the yarn I'm ready to knit with. It's attached to my other ball. And then this is going to be my old one. It's my contrast color I'm ready to be done with. So I'm gonna hold it over to the left and pull that main color up to lock that contrast color in. can see it's locked in. I can pull it a little bit tighter. And that is intarsia. It is so easy. What you will notice, let's take this away for a minute, is you are going to see a hole right at the bottom of your heart because we haven't woven in those ends. It's kind of like when you do a stripe and it's still loose. So if you felt moved to, you could, I mentioned like that loose double knot, you could take your ends and just give them a, you know, I sometimes I'll just do like, oh, that broke, um, something like that. Just super loosely so that nothing is happening. And then it looks a little more secure and tight. I'm not gonna lose a stitch there. Um, so you can totally do that, but you're just gonna continue in this manner for the entire chart. That is intarsia. It is so, so easy. And you'll also use this technique for the back of your sweater, but using your other um, contrast color yarns, which are your mini skein kits. And that is really the trickiest part of the sweater. I know you can do it. As always, reach out if you need help. Amy at Nick Collage. <laughs>